Well, how are you guys doing? Uh, well, for, for what I do, I work with big rectangles. That's right behind you. That's called Huffcore Walls, Movable Walls. But before I go into that, uh, what in the world can a manufacturer do with BIM? Well, everything. We actually can do a lot of different things. And so, for me, Chad Grace, I love BIM and I love 3D. I've been working with uh, BIM products for about 20 years. Been designing um, content, Revit content for, I don't know, uh, whenever Autodesk bought it, uh, about 14, uh, 16 years ago. Um, so it's absolutely fun to do. I love building the content. And the reason why I started building the content is because there was a whole bunch of bad content. And I just hated using bad content. So I found a better way. I found a way that works much better to just build better stuff. So my passion is to create user-friendly models. And um, so I've also helped many manufacturers uh, start and succeed in using BIM software, uh, essentially uh, growing their market uh, and changing that, making them money is pretty much the, what they want to uh, do. So HuffCorp, we are the world's leading supplier in movable walls. Yes, the big rectangles right over there. Uh, but we are so much more than that. We, we actually provide sound barriers, sight barriers, beautiful spaces that divide in all types of markets. Let's take an open uh, college concept um, that we have here. And let's add in glass partitions. And the, let's do, let's make it into a multifunctional room. Much better. Now you can actually uh, take it apart, move it around, uh, separate out the different rooms, and then open it all the way back up again for a big function again. Just like this room here. We can take down that wall and make it a bigger function. And that's what we do. Um, but how? How can we actually... Uh, get involved in many of the phases and help the design team and architects bring our expertise in this process. Well, dynamic content. That's what, hopefully, yep, it's going. Uh, just in case uh, we get too early in design uh, to be involved, we want to provide the architect and, and designer and end user to have the best content. So that content needs to be easy, functional, and small in size. And each of my models do that. So we start with the best content. And now how can you uh, find this content? That's the biggest thing. Well, we're a manufacturer. If you don't know uh, HuffCorp, well, then how can you find us? That's the biggest problem. So we use hosting sites. And these hosting sites, um, well, it, BIM Objects. It's absolutely wonderful. I love their website. I love how to host their content. Um, I also love um, the code that you can be added in at the beginning or at the end. Whenever you need it, you got that code. Um, and meaning Coda, um, all the different uh, items that can be just downloaded straight from, uh, from the website at any point in time. So it doesn't balloon up the bottle. And that's the great thing about that. So other benefits is um, a microsite. Now, we just heard something really cool today. So uh, we don't have to actually go through uh, doing the microsites. We actually have the API now that we can actually build into our websites, which, which is absolutely wonderful. So now we got the HuffCore product at your fingers, easy to download, perfect content out. Now, there is other hosting sites, but BIM Objects is the best. Just want to say that. <laughs> so, uh, now, I do have to... <laughs> <laughs> so now I do have to give you some uh, numbers, just like everybody else has given numbers. Um, what do we get? When, when we uh, have just done all this work, made all these models, did all this work, paid for hosting sites, 
Well, we get actually downloads, number of downloads. We get contacts. We get leads, potential customers. And notice the growth that we have here. We actually are um, averaging about 100 downloads a week just for our product. And that's a lot of potential customers. Uh, that's going right into our Revit models, uh, uh, your Revit models, uh, the designer's Revit models. And that means a lot because they're now using our product. And that is absolutely stunning and uh, beautiful because they're going to call on us when they need help. Uh, so now I'm going to actually walk you through uh, a project um, that I think is a really big win for BIM and from start to finish. But before I do that, well, um, really HuffCore can be involved in any of the phases that, uh, that we have here, the delivery cycle. This de delivery cycle actually, um, we could actually get involved most of the time, we used to get involved in the bidding phase, and that's about it. Um, because of the bidding phase, we didn't know how big the closets are, the, uh, we fit our stuff in closets. Um, those clauses sometimes are too small by the time the bidding phase happens. So then change orders have to make, be made. And that means more money spent for not me, but for them to change things to make it fit. But we could have actually gotten involved earlier on with the design phase and then actually would save them money because they're now uh, using us, the expertise, to do actually the, the work. We give them the models and then they're done. And so they just saved a couple hours of work. They actually know what sizes they need. And, and it just is a wonderful thing. So uh, this is actually uh, Dickinson. Uh, it's a school uh, in the Americas. And um, they weren't even looking at HuffCore to use HuffCore. They weren't even looking. Uh, they didn't even know what they wanted to design. Um, we came up with this initial design saying, hey, this could be a potential idea for you guys. Uh, this wall actually uh, goes from one side of the room uh, down to the bottom side of the room. It's actually pretty cool. Um, and then there's actually a sliding partition that goes from uh, the top to the bottom. I'll show you that a little bit later. But they loved this design. And then they actually put it into their floor plan. Uh, that floor plan, there's 27 different... Um, uh, 27 similar rooms in, from that initial design. And there's three different floors on that. And so that's how much they loved it. They actually put it in every single floor of the school. So now they got this floor plan, but it's kind of hard to sell to a school system, right? Uh, school systems are kind of hard to get the approval. Well, we show them in 3Ds. That's, that's why I say BIM is the best for this. So we have an open plan. This open plan is just like a wonderful um, way that the kids could all be around each other, be um, just absorbed with everybody. Now we can give them more flexible spaces. This just kind of showed them what they could do, but this is not what they really wanted. Uh, but it just shows how the walls can be moved from one side to the other side. They can sh you can have a marker board that slid all the way from one side to the other side. This here is the discovery room. They actually love this. This is what they were wanting, the discovery room. So that initial area uh, where the white wall is, that actually, it, there's a hallway there for the school hallway. And then now there is an open area for the kids to just enjoy and, and be in. But then you can go one step further into the discovery area. It's all three different classrooms and they're all separated. There's marker board there that is a slide, sliding wall again, and they can move things around. This is their classroom. Again, this goes right from the, the school hallway straight into the classrooms. And then you can go even further in and have a, like a study hall area right there, done. So now we wanted to even go one step further and show them 3Ds. And I love my 3Ds. That's what I like to do. Um, so I showed him the, uh, this picture here, this wonderful 3D view. I picked out some similar uh, product from BIM Objects website uh, to put in there to um, complement our partitions to make it look more realistic. You can actually see the, uh, the marker board 
way in the back that's kind of starting to slide out. So we also did um, virtual reality. And this, you can put your goggles on. And, and the, the great thing about this is in Revit, it's like minimal uh, cost to uh, anybody. It's just a static camera that spins around and it's a rendering. And now I got a beautiful view that, uh, that, that they can do. So now, now with that, we had actually um, clash detection issues. And that's the other great thing about BIM and Revit. We were in the design process. We found out that there was actually uh, a beam in the way. And that beam, um, we had to shift that marker board over. Done. No cost to anybody. It was done. So that was the great thing. So now I have a, uh, that's our finished product there of the room pretty close to uh, what the renderings were. Different furniture, but that's okay. And that's a one-ton wall that she's moving. That's a marker board. Which kind of give you an idea of how, how that works. But we could have showed that in a virtual reality, but it's better to show that live person pushing it. So that, that was the great thing about that. Okay. Now, I also wanted to show you there's another rendering picture, or it's not a rendering, that's a, a live picture that we just recently took. Um, we want to show you some, a, a, a couple other examples of some different jobs that I did. Um, this one here is a project that's in um, UK somewhere. I can't tell you where it is. Uh, but they gave me a PDF, a really bad PDF. And they said, okay, what can you do for us? I'm like, well, I can do a lot. So I did. I did a nice, pretty 3D for them. And they loved it. Now, the cool thing about it is, is that um, that PDF turned into a Revit drawing from them because they liked it. And so I got their Revit file, which is hard to get from architects, really. It's hard. Um, but with that uh, Revit file, I was able to actually do some more clash detection for them. There's actually a walkway, um, there's a viewing room uh, over the whole um, exhibit hall, and there's a little walkway. Well, on their plans, they really didn't show that, and so I never knew about it. So I parked my panels over there, and I was like, well, I can't do that. So I flipped them over to the other side, and um, now they loved it even more because uh, we found the problem. We solved it. And I got it to exactly the right size because scaling a PDF is very hard. So now I got a perfect model for them. I sent this to them, and they put it into their Revit model, and it's done. Um, now I also have this uh, USA project. We, uh, we're, uh, I would say uh, it's Wynn Hotel. Um, and this guy, he loved gold. And so we had to make some gold products, a gold trim, gold everything. Um, I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, they wanted a, 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 spe a special reveal, too, and um, right by the panic bars. Um, and I'm like, okay, fine. I put a special reveal in there. Um, now, then, then I get from the designer. The designer, she's like, I don't want gold. I want red. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So we, we made it red. Um, and put some special finishes on it. But that, that's the great thing about it, is that we can show them in 3D. And now she's going to take this back to the owner that loves gold and try and get him sold on this. So um, the, she didn't even have, actually, uh, any of the colors picked out, which is kind of funny. She gave me pictures of molding that was in a different building. I was like, okay. So we actually built her wall covering for her. So that was just kind of funny. Um, so to recap... Um, BIM benefits, improves on the marketing efficiencies, assists the architect, uh, assists the, what does it say? Can't read that far. Assists the architects in design, speeds client approval for 3D, detects uh, construction clashes, and custom product um, so, and then in the future, we can actually do some more stuff, um, which actually they talked about a little bit more about the specifications, which uh, I'm waiting for and ready for that too. And then the FM cycle, which will, again, go right back into the building. So it's perfect. 
Thank you very much for, for that.